This, this is the Our Auto Expert Podcast. Find us on air, online, on mobile, and on your smart speaker. Please subscribe at ourautoexpert.com. Our Auto Expert. 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 Now, here's the host of Our Auto Expert. Our Auto Expert. Nick Miles. Locally created, nationally celebrated from the northwest to the southeast. This is the World's Car Radio Show. If it has a throttle, we'll feature it on air, online, on smartphone, or on smart speaker. This is our auto expert, where two million Americans get their automotive news daily. I'm your host, Nick Miles, along with Truck Girl Jen, who can handle a big V8 gasoline truck, but apparently can't handle a cup of coffee. Correct. How was that, coffee? Oh, it's, <laughs> it's everywhere. It's in my lap. <laughs> it's in your lap. You're very clear. You know what? In the old days of radio, that would have taken us off the air. I know. In the modern days of radio, yeah. you got it. No, it's all good. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> cleaning up my mess. Thank goodness that you didn't do that to the brand new red leathered Lexus GX 460 2021 that we uh, we drove in today. You don't have a computer now, do you? No, I'm good. <laughs> Actually, I'm sure it would wipe right off those seats. The nice new leather seats. I love those seats. <laughs> Your face is just priceless. <laughs> Thank God it's radio. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wishing it was television, to be honest with you. No. Uh, what? No. <laughs> Go away. Leave me alone. Let me sulk in my corner. No, I'm good. <laughs> Thank goodness that COVID is here and we have an endless supply of wet wipes, antiseptic wet wipes. Because <laughs> otherwise you'd be running to the kitchen to grab, you know, wiping stuff. Mm-hmm. Did you notice that hordes of staff didn't come to help? If this had been me, like everybody been, you know, swiping me down with paper towels. Oh yes. Everybody just looked over. I you wouldn't. And, <laughs> you would, everybody just looked over you and went, yeah, there's Jen, spilling her coffee all over herself. Just well, as the show begins. Well, I appreciate How did you the do cup that? of coffee this morning. How did you do that? Um, I just moved my mic and I actually hit the straw. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Knocked your straw over. You know what the uh, well, you know what the answer to that is. Don't have a straw? No, don't have coffee in the studio. <laughs> you know those big signs that say no drinks or food in the studio? That's why. Yeah, I know. A packed show today for you, everyone. <laughs> coffee everywhere. I'm uh, going to talk a little bit about the vehicles that we have um, been driving this week. The Lexus GX is one of them, the 2021 version. I got a 2016. That's my, <clears throat> I feel embarrassed like this, maybe a little hoity-toity, maybe a little posh, but that's my dog car. Your hoity-toity. Yeah, I know. It sound, I sound a little arrogant when I say that. Um, I have a Lexus GX, and that's what I use to transport my dogs around. Because when you have really nice cars in your driveway, you don't want to put okay, five back puppies up, in them. Back up. Yeah. It's a really nice car. It is, but uh, it's one I can get dirty. Yeah, exactly. Um, the and really take the nice dogs to the dog. Seat is wiped so, down. Yeah, I, I can take the dogs to the dog park. And my nephew Andrew loves to detail cars, and every so often he'll come over and detail my Lexus. Mm-hmm. So uh, he, it's fun for him to do. By the way, if you have dogs and you want to get dog hair off of a carpet, here's the secret: seventy-two percent of Americans, by the way, own dogs. Mm-hmm. If you ever want to get dog hair off of a carpet in a car, this is the secret. Pumice stone. You know those that you use in the bath to get, you know, to get your heels all nice and soft? No. Pum- on stone. what? On just the regular On cloth? car carpet. No, on carpet. The carpet. Not you... on cloth, on leather. Oh, my God. Well, oh. I was wondering what you were talking about. <gasps> exactly. I short breath here. Mm-hmm. <sighs> um, no, you know what else a, works? Use a pumice stone on carpet, and it pulls the dog hair right off. It puts it into a clump. You just, then you just you know what else suck works it up really the well? and what? Pledge. You spray pledge down, and then you get a brush. On a carpet? On the carpet or the seats, not leather. The cloth seats. But yeah, it works really well. It doesn't sound like you should be doing that. I do it all the time. It's so It works great it, on couches and my carpet's even upstairs. Okay, anyways. I don't feel good about spraying wax polish on cloth. It's a mist of it. It's not like you go, Psh! I mean, it's just a light all mist. Right. Gen hacks. We'll call this part of the show Gen hacks. Okay, you want to hear another one? Okay, go. Okay, bathrooms. Wait a sec. This is a car show. I know, Wait, there's no bathrooms but in it a has, car. It has a little bit to do with cars. Okay. Okay. So I actually stole this hack from my mom. So okay. you spray oven cleaner on the bath. Oh, tub. tub. Yeah, everyone knows that. Right. Let it sit right for 15 minutes. Wipe it down, and then you put Rain-X on it. Oh, for cars. 
so you can slip over in the tub and break your hip. No, on the wall. Be careful, oh America, God. of gen hacks. You could get hurt. Uh, what else is on today's show? <laughs> Packed, by the way. Tons of stuff coming up. Uh, we're going to talk today uh, about the uh, brand new uh, Hyundai Ioniq 5. So this is their first electrified SUV. Boy, there's a lot of electrified SUVs coming out here. Uh, the Ioniq 5 hits, uh, hits in April. It's out in the rest of the world. We're a little bit slow in America. We're getting all of these electrified SUVs behind the rest of the world. That's because their mandates are coming out ahead of us, especially in Europe. They've had all of these uh, green mandates a lot faster than we have. If you're into electric, we're going to uh, tell you what's coming. If you're not, sorry. Uh, if you're not, then uh, at least you should know about them. It's kind of interesting, too. 300 miles on a single charge. Uh, we're going to get all of the... And by the way, uh, Johannes Sanchez, the guy who uh, is going to do the interview, never done radio before. He's, I, I got a phone call from, from one of the guys he works with. He's a little bit scared. Oh, yeah, he won't be crying when we're done. Uh, we're also <laughs> going to talk to uh, Greg Elba, uh, Ebla. Uh, he's the uh, Abel? police... Abel? Ebel? Is that you said? Ebel? 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 He's the police marketing manager from Ford. Uh, they have a new F-150 response, uh, police responder vehicle, which is specially made to chase uh, the bad guys. An F-150, the best-selling pickup in America. We're going to talk about that. Um, I, I like the idea because it can chase them on and off-road. Yeah, you think you're going to go off-road and lose us? Think again, bad guy robber. Here we come, right behind you. And, the, our, and the next interview speaker. after that is oh, yeah. my favorite. <laughs> it is? Yes. The Ridgeline? I like Carl Pulley. Yeah, because he's, he's, one, of our, nice he's one of my kind. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't a say that. Yeah, I know that. And he's a motorcycle rider. I could have meant either by that, by the way. I, I, I wasn't and, and even... He's, and he's cool and he wears teddy boy shoes. Does anyone know what teddy boy shoes are? No. Teddy boys were very British. They were rock and rollers. Mm -hmm. uh, they were like Elvis guys, but not Elvis guys. They were sort of rock and rollers with the long jackets that went down to their knees. Oh. Uh, uh, velour type jackets with, uh, with teddy boy shoes, platform shoes. They hmm. were very English. Um, okay. Rock and roller teddy boys. Hmm. Um, and uh, he wears those shoes. He's very cool. He rides, mo rides motorcycles. He's a very nice guy. He yes. works for Honda. He's going to talk about the Ridgeline, uh, their new truck. It's been uh, refreshed for 2021. Um, we're also going to hear from uh, uh, Rachel. She works for, for Jeep, um, but sort of the Wagoneer, which is their new premium brand. Mm -hmm. So now we have three premium brands in America. We have Cadillac, we have Lincoln, and we have Wagoneer. If you had missed this in the news somehow, we're going to bring you up to speed with that. You've got three premium American-made brands. Lincoln, I'm repeating this in case anyone missed it. Lincoln, uh, Cadillac, and now Wagoneer. Got to get used to that now. There used to be two, now there's three. So Jeep have launched their premium brand. It's called Wagoneer. Um, we're going to find out the skinny on that because it's... They're sort of being a bit mystic about it. The two vehicles are the Wagoneer and the Grand Wagoneer, the two first ones. Mm -hmm. So they were just announced. They're hopefully going to be uh, pre-ordering now or soon, and then they're going to be on the market uh, come the beginning of next year. I just exchanged a text with the vice president of Jeep, Jim Morrison, this, uh, this morning. Yeah. Um, so we're going to find out all, all the skinny about the Wagoneer brand and those two vehicles, both three, uh, three rows, by the way. And uh, incredible amount of screen space. All the mod cons, but no coffee maker. Oh, we'll get into that later on. That's okay. I'd probably Don't... spill it. Yes, you would. <laughs> Anton Mormon joining us to talk about lies. Somebody's telling lies, and we know they are. We'll tell you who it is. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, this cross-country trip that VW are taking. Uh, Dustin Krauss, he's the director of e-mobility from VW. And uh, he's taken a daring step of taking the ID4. That's their first uh, all-electric SUV. He's driving more electric SUVs. He's driving it all the way across the United States. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hear about how well it's going. I want to hear about the bad stuff. I want to hear about you know of getting trapped. You do. I want to hear about running out of electric. I want to hear about sleeping on the high side of the highway in the middle of the night asking for help. Now, I believe that he's in California. Going to be in California today. Is that correct? He left in, from uh, New York. Um, I know that they did message me something about being in Sacramento. Okay. That I'm going to find out. That would be California. But I, know, I, I, want, I want to hear the scary stories. Of course you do. Yeah. Who, does, who wants to hear about the, oh, yeah, it's going great. No. You read novels or watch movies to see the scary, daredevil -y stuff. 
Well, I'm sure you can ask him to. Like spilling coffee all over the radio equipment. <laughs> <laughs> the scary daredevilly stuff. That's what's. You don't. You don't tune in just to hear nothingness, do you? You tune into the show because you know you're living on the edge. And we tell you who, which car company is telling lies. Mm-hmm. We're going to tell you which one. I have, a, I have an idea. Do you? Yeah, I do. Does it begin with? T. Well, I'm not telling you. You have to wait for that later <laughs> in the show. Just say it's not the first lies they've told. Okay. They always, they always tell us lies. We're going to out them on the show. Mm-hmm. They'll tell you all about the lies they've been telling. All right. That, uh, by the way, if you have ever um, just listened to the show and not watched any of our TV segments, I'm going to tell you how you can do that right now. We have a website, our, O-U-R, auto, A-U-T-O, expert, E-X-P-E-R-T dot com. You can actually sign up for alerts. And uh, once a week, we'll send you out this very cool emailer. And in this emailer, it tells you some of the key stories that have gone out over the week. Uh, They're written by our our writer team. Uh, They're the same guys that, by the way, write for MSN Autos. Mm -hmm. Uh, You can get those. You can also see some of our TV videos that we do. Uh, By the way, last week, we were at Nissan Design Center in California. It's called NDA, Nissan Design America. First TV cameras in 25 years to do live out of the Nissan Design Center. That's crazy. And, uh, and then also, you can see all those videos, and you can hear this show. The, 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 we turn it into a podcast by, uh, by the power of some very clever editors. Hmm. We turn it into a podcast, and you can listen to, I think we've got 140 episodes there now. I think so. Why should you be bored while sitting at home during a pandemic? You can listen to all of those. Well, and it's on iHeart, and it's on Spotify, and it's on Podbean, Apple, and Apple, iTunes, and, and yeah. And about 400 other places that you can listen to exactly. it as well. <laughs> and you can sign up and be alerted every single time new versions come along. What is, I mean, your, your life has been very vacant until now. All right, more coming up. <laughs> oh, no, expert. You're listening to Our Auto Expert. Catch up with previous episodes of the show, our website, ourautoexpert.com. You can hear all past shows, see automotive videos, and read insider car stories about your next ride. Our Auto Expert is where 2 million Americans get their automotive news daily. All right, well, I have to tell you that the two vehicles that I have been driving this week include, and we mentioned it at the top of the show a little bit, the GX460 from Lexus, $53,250, the starting price. You can well equip it up from there. That's the base model. There is the 460 Premium above that and the 460 Luxury, seven-seater passenger vehicle, 6,500 uh, 6, pounds towing capacity, 301 horsepower out of a 6.4-litre V8 engine. The cool thing about this vehicle is it has great performance. It's hard to find a V8 engine in a vehicle today since everybody's downgrading for the environment. Not necessarily a bad thing. Five multi-terrain settings, a very good off-road capability. Um, I haven't say I wouldn't say I've done a lot of off-roading, but it is definitely a favorite with all of the off-road community and a naturally aspirated 4 uh, 4.6 liter V8 is something that helps you do that. Class X Exclusive kinetic dynamic suspension system. It looks great. There are uh, seven different colors. One, two, three, four, five, six, six, six different colors. Uh, the vehicle that I have is in the atomic silver, although my favorite is the claret mica, the red. What do you, you like the red best? What do you like? The blue. The blue, which is called nightfall mica. I like the claret mica. The red one. Mm-hmm. Although I've always, you know, maybe it's write me a ticket red. I have to be careful of that too. Safety <laughs> safety systems, the most comprehensive safety systems ever included in the GX and the 2021. Uh, security, of course, is standard as well. The most advanced GX ever with the new Amazon Alexa capability, uh, innovated camera technology for greater visibility, which was really helpful when we had to get out of a tight parking space in my driveway because too many cars in there, mm-hmm. um, as well as available m- multi dimensional sound um the 2021 gx has a seamless uh, merge capability for co- uh, convenience it looks really nice and i have had that third row folded all the way down so i can get lots of stuff in the back of the vehicle of course you can get all the information at lexus.com i like this vehicle a lot the other one that i have been driving is the qx60 this is probably the most underrated vehicle from infinity that they have this is their two-door sports car uh the qx60 uh qx60 q60 sorry q60 
their most underrated sports car ever. The V6 uh, twin turbo engine on the inside. Potentially the red line, which is uh, the one I've been driving, is probably, I would say, their halo car. They don't, the GTR, which is mm. m- built by Nissan, is part of the Nissan group rather Love than the Infinity group. So you have the 300 horsepower, uh, the, which is a 3-liter V6 twin-turbo engine, uh, gets about 27 uh, highway miles per gallon. That is on the lower end. And then the 400 horsepower, 3-liter V6 twin-turbo engine, which does about 26 miles a gallon. That is the one which is in the uh, the Red Sport, sorry, the Red Sport, which is the higher end of the vehicles. And I'm the Red Sport, and it's really fun to drive. Handling is, uh, <laughs> handling is instantly uh, adaptable. It's just a dream to drive, especially in canyon carving. Not that I've been canyon carving with it, but doing some country roads with it is um, very delightful, mm-hmm. would I say. Uh, very well balanced, very easy to drive. Uh, I would say... Deep canyon carving with something I'd like to do, but I haven't actually had that uh, chance to do it. It's low, it's wide, it's powerful, it has a good stance. Signature elements like uh, the eye-inspiring headlights and uh, the double-arched grille make it instantly Infinity. You can tell that it's an Infinity just from a long way away, yet dynamic, and it, it moves fast. It has that sporty coupe look. I forget because I drive a lot of SUVs all the time. Uh, all I own is SUVs. I don't own a car. Actually, that's not true. I have the BMW um, 330e, the yeah. electric plug-in hybrid. But most of the vehicles I own, all the others, are either trucks or SUVs. One truck, two SUVs. You've kind of fallen into the American category. Yeah, if. sorry. Uh, yeah, when you get into something like this, you really appreciate it, especially with the all-wheel drive. And it's, the Q6 is very pure. It's uh, The all-wheel drive also makes it easy to drive. Um, and their sort of idea of design, the smoothness of the body shape, it sort of carries on in the driving. It's very unique stitching on the inside. It looks nice. The seating design is comfortable. The steering wheel is easy to handle. I notice the natural grip immediately when I get into the vehicle as well. If you're looking for that four-seater, two-door sports coupe, that you don't necessarily want to take people with you. It has four seats, so you can, but you don't really want to take them. I'm just saying Mm -hmm. it has a lot of also the technology that you want, 13 speakers, advanced uh, technology. Uh, It has that surround sound, uh, um, the audio pilot, uh, noise uh, compensation on the inside, multi 10 inch uh, screen, subwoofers, great sound, tweeters sound amazing on the inside. And of course, things like Apple CarPlay integration and seamless Plugging in your phone is very seamless to get it through. I actually don't use navigation in my vehicle anymore at all. It also has that predictive forward collision warning. But which you, if you really look at it, though, it's it's such a luxury sedan look. But yet when you drive it, the race car person comes out in you. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> it's deceiving. I don't drive anything the race car driver comes out of me. <laughs> You should know that. I know. It was the key when we drive this and Jen sits in it as she grabs the seatbelt. Mm-hmm. Always. And then occasionally you can get her to go. <laughs> okay, let's not bring that back up. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> and you haven't yeah. sat in this one with me, though. Nope. Um, it does also help you. It's easy to get in and out of parking spaces because it does that surround view um, camera. 360. Um, 360 camera. It does the monitoring surround when uh, when you're in the freeway. It helps you keep in your lane, too. Um, you know, Which you need. Occasionally when I have to pick up my phone and answer it. And you're not supposed to do that, Nick. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Hands free. You're also not supposed to knock over your coffee all over the radio equipment. So, <laughs> Well, we're not perfect, are we? We just want to, <laughs> want to go there, Jen. No. Talk about that. No, we're it's, good. Uh, it has flexibility uh, to, to basically have your whole life. So mm. go test drive it. I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. It's sort of the It's sort of the sporty, sexy version of the Q, uh, you know, of the uh, Q50, which is the, s- the four-door version of this. The Q60 Red Sport is the sexy version. It is, for sure. Four-door, lovely. Two-door, very me. Okay, four-door, cheaper in insurance. Two-door, not so much. And two-door, Jen goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Our God. auto expert, more on the way. You're listening to the Our Auto Expert Podcast. 
Welcome back to our Auto Expert radio show. Okay, well, this is our Auto Expert, and our Auto Experts on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can start a conversation with us. Ask us a car question. Just direct messages at our Auto Expert, where two million Americans get automotive news daily. So, I uh, got a little phone call from my friend Miles down at uh, Hyundai this week to uh, prep me for talking about the Ionic 5. Uh, joining us on the phone is uh, Johannes Sanchez. So, I hear this is the first time you've done a radio interview. Hi, Nick. Yes, that's correct. So, uh, having you. that's no problem. Uh, Miles told me to be nice to you, so I'll be nice to you. <laughs> he. <laughs> Uh, first question, a little bit off uh, off of the subject. So you've been in product planning uh, for a while. Why haven't we had a coffee maker inside a car? That's the one thing I've been asking for for years. Why haven't the product planning guys given us a coffee maker? That's the one thing I want. I think I have the same question. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think that would be if we could get so even if it's a crop where we put a little, uh, you know, just a little holder in there just to make coffee. That that would a Keurig, a Keurig, a Keurig yeah. yeah, that would be the perfect thing. All right, let's get on to the Ionic Five. Uh, first of all, when you bring out a new electric vehicle, we've all seen pictures of this because it's been obviously released in other countries. The first thing that everybody gets excited about, and they do, is they compare it to everything else that's out there. Um, so we want to know. What's the range going to be like when when this thing comes out in the United States? What are we going to see as far as range and and how we compare it against other vehicles? Yeah, so that's definitely been one of the key pillars uh, for the Ionic 5, right? Uh, We've been really designing this car to move EV mainstream. Um, And we know that one of the big issues uh, for consumers that might be on the fence for an EV vehicle is range. Um, So with the EGMP platform, uh, you might have seen some other numbers out there um uh from the global release but in terms of the u.s specific numbers uh, i don't think we can disclose those just yet uh, but i do want to say that's been one of the main uh, kind of driving points or north stars for this vehicle and i think when we can uh finally reveal that number uh that everyone will be pleasantly surprised so uh maybe i can't give you the specifics just yet but uh definitely something that we've uh made a key point on this vehicle and in, in terms of addressing uh, what buyers uh in this space want yeah, because everybody's looking for that magic Tesla number, right? So Tesla does around 300 miles. Uh, that's what people are really looking to get there. Obviously, when you when you put it up against the vehicles already out there, they're looking to try and compete against that. And then the second thing everybody looks again, look, is looking for is charge times because the, the less time spent at a charger, the more convenient the lifestyle of owning an electric car is, right? Absolutely. So... Uh, in addition to uh, answering the range uh, question that we've been trying to do with the Ionic 5, uh, the charge times are definitely uh, one of the strengths of the eGMP platform. So it utilizes an 800 volt architecture uh, that will allow us to connect to 350 kilowatt uh, charging, which ultimately ends up giving you from 10 to 80 percent charge in a little under 18 minutes. Um, so really excited about that. I think the only other vehicles out there offering something similar is the, the Porsche uh, Taycan. So, um, yeah, it's definitely a strength there in terms of charging time and and getting rid of that range anxiety uh, as we move EV mainstream. Um, I would say, you know, why is it taking you guys so long to get an electric vehicle to market? But it really isn't. I mean, we've just seen the uh, Mach-E arrive this year. We're just seeing the ID4 arrive in April. This is going to arrive sometime in the fall? That's right, later this year. All right. First, all electric SUV, but it's just the real beginning of your plan at Hyundai. That's correct. So um, the Ionic 5 kind of kicks off a Ionic sub-brand of sorts uh, for Hyundai. Uh, so we're really showing our commitment to innovation and sustainability moving into the future. Um, and, and again, this subcompact CUV, Ionic 5, is just the first of three. So we'll be seeing an Ionic 6 and an Ionic 7 um, in the near future. So... Uh, the the way it works with the Ionics is that the even numbers are sedans and the odd numbers are SUVs. Is that right? That's correct. And the uh, the numbers also connect uh, to the segment of vehicles. So the five uh, for us is the compact uh, CUV. Uh, the seven is the larger CUV, and then the six is the um, kind of midsize sedan. So. Uh, both even and odd, and then related also to their segment. So the bigger the number, the bigger the vehicle. Yes. So we should be seeing the 7 as being a three-row SUV, something like that. 
Yeah, it'll be around there. That's what we're we're uh, targeting. Now you've announced obviously three vehicles coming: the five, six, and seven. Is is the plan to expand those uh, that lineup in the future? Um, because that's really the core of everything that everybody's doing, right? I mean, those are the core vehicles. Um, but there's room to go other places from there, isn't there? Uh, there is, uh, but as of right now, the, our, our plans are centered around the, the five, six, and seven. And and the biggest problem, you know, has been cost uh, for for these vehicles. Um, you know, electric vehicles are very expensive uh, compared to gasoline versions of the vehicle. Uh, that's been one of the problems. And the incentives, although they've helped that, uh, going into the electric world ends up that even though you save money on fuel, it's still hard to to make sense of uh, making that investment for a lot of people, uh, even unless you get one that's sort of in the luxury category. So let's first of all start off with the incentives. Hyundai have had electric vehicles in the past. When these arrive, do you expect them to be eligible for Hyundai for the seventy five hundred dollar tax credit? Uh, absolutely. In terms of the Ionic Five, uh, we will still be eligible for that um, tax incentive. All right, um, mm-hmm. and, and and then. Uh, moving forward, do we do we expect pricing to come in the fall, or will it come sooner? I believe pricing will come closer to the fall. All right. So tell me a little bit about the the vehicle itself. Uh, what do we know so far, and and what would what will we have to wait for? Uh, so right now, I think we already mentioned um, you know the rain situation and the ultra fast charging. Uh, in terms of its size, it's a subcompact CUV. Uh, we've been kind of describing it as having the footprint of a Tucson, uh, but the wheelbase that's larger than a Palisade, right? So really taking advantage of our EGMP platform uh, to deliver a really innovative interior um, uh, and maximizing the space that's available to us uh, on the on the inside. Uh, in terms of uh, what we're waiting for or, or new details, um, I think we've already mentioned uh, about the powertrains, and we're really excited about the dual motor all-wheel drive powertrain on this thing. Uh, really performs quite nicely. Seat of pants feels really good uh, in terms of zero to 60 times. And then um, we've also mentioned, I believe, the premium HUD, uh, which has some uh, augmented reality function, uh, which is actually really cool to see uh, to see in person and, and live there. Uh, kind of puts things on the windshield um, at, at, with your warnings, navigation, uh, lane departure assist, um, all show up kind of uh, on the road, which is pretty interesting. Uh, the vehicle to load capability on this car uh, has also been mentioned. So uh, I don't know if you're familiar with any of the teasers that have come out for uh, the Ionic 5, but they've really highlighted uh, this ability to power uh, a variety of things with the Ionic 5. Uh, and that's been focused on on kind of a, what they've been calling ultimate camping, right? So you go out with this car, you're camping, you can power whatever you want. Uh, and I've been kind of considering it, or the first thing that popped into my mind with this capability is uh, tailgating. So uh, you know, going out to, to – I, I went to SC. So going out to a SC tailgate, and I can power uh, my whole tailgate with this thing. So uh, those are some of the features that I think we've already shared, actually, um, that have been pretty exciting. Uh, and then in terms of what we're waiting for, uh, I think, like you mentioned, uh, just, just divulging the, the information on the, the end range for this vehicle, uh, I think, uh, again, we'll, everyone will be pleasantly surprised. So um, just some of the, the highlights on the Ionic 5 and then some of the things that are still to come. Now, on the interior of this vehicle as well is also environmentally friendly. Can you explain that? Yeah, that's, that's again, another point of uh, what we're trying to push forward with our sustainability. Uh, a lot of the touch points inside the vehicle, the seats, uh, the headliner, um, are all using more eco-friendly materials in terms of uh, using uh, bio-based leatherettes um, and then, and then uh, eco-friendly uh, bio-pet materials as well. Uh, so, again, we're kind of trying to push forward uh, and show that Hyundai is really dedicated to this feature of sustainability. I One of the things I think I'm sort of most excited about this is the amount of technology that you can cram into the insides because 
when you sort of vacate all of these things like drivetrain and uh, you know, the, the gas motor, the ice motor and a drive shaft, those type of things, you end up with so much space on the inside. I was always marveling when I got to first drive the I-Pace from Jaguar. It was as big on the inside as an XJ, but on the outside it was sort of uh, half the size. And because you don't have so much stuff on the uh, that you have to cram into the vehicle just to make it work, you end up with so much space, and that allows you to do so much more. That's very true. Um, so we're, we're really utilizing that space on the Ionic 5 as well. Uh, we've got a slim co- uh, cockpit. Uh, that actually uh, protrudes less into the cabin than your traditional um, uh, crash pad. So we actually have a lot of space there. It just opens up the interior quite a bit, gives you a really good sensation of spaciousness. Uh, we also have what they're calling the Universal Island, which is a movable sensor console. Uh, so basically, you can move that all the way back. It really opens up uh, the space between the two front passengers, again, really just giving you that uh, feeling of spaciousness and also provides a pass-through for um from either seat uh, in the front. Uh, and then we also, again, uh, helping utilize that flat floor on the uh, rear seats. Uh, you can move those forward and back and, and access, uh, maybe have your little your little guy like I do um, in your back seat, you can actually access them because you can pull the seats forward and again, just utilizing that flat floor and, floor and taking um, advantage of the EGMP platform. Awesome, Johannes, um, thank you. I'm really looking forward to driving this, the new Ionic 5 just uh, around the corner from uh, being announced. And of course, there'll be two more vehicles behind that, the six, which is the sedan, and then the three row Ionic 7 as well. That is the sort of plan behind Hyundai releasing their Ionic brand, which is their electric brand, the mobility lifestyle behind electricity. <laughs> Uh, that is Johannes Sanchez. He is the product planner for Hyundai, talking about the Ionic, their electric brand. More to come on our Auto Expert. You're listening to our Auto Expert. Over 12,000 people have downloaded our Auto Expert podcast and many more stream it. Join the happy listeners via iHeartRadio, the Pandora app, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and ourautoexpert.com. Hours of endless fun await you. I'm Nick Miles, and this is our Auto Expert radio show. Two million Americans get their automotive news daily from our Auto Expert. Uh, Good news this week. Uh, Ford, or last week, I'm guessing, Ford announced they are adding to their fleet of uh, police vehicles by adding the brand new F-150 version of the police vehicle. And uh, joining us on the phone is Greg Ebel. Uh, Greg is the police brand marketing manager. So when I'm driving down the freeway, uh, Greg, that F-150 behind me may not just be an F-150. It might be uh, your new F-150 police pursuit vehicle. Yeah, you're exactly right. And and thanks for having me on. We actually launched the first pursuit-rated pickup back in 2017. So this is... This is a revamped version, all new for 2021. So we're we're super excited. We have some great new content, and we we did reveal it here. It's recently, actually, on March March 16th, a virtual reveal. But um, some, some some key things to be, uh, to be aware of with the new truck is we have we have a new top speed of 120 miles per hour, and and that is a that's a great improvement over the 105 you're currently. And this is something that our customers, our law enforcement customers, have asked for. A lot of them, within their bid specs, they require at least uh, of the minimum of 120 up for enhanced uh, pursuit capability, and that's what that's what we're delivering with the new truck. And and we also have some great new improvements for the performance and handling of the truck itself. And and that's delivered uh, via via we have a new torque on demand four by four transfer case which it offers an automatic, it's a four auto mode. So you can set, you can set the four by four system to automatic and you can forget about it. If, if you're traversing off road or if you're going on road, you're going to have that instantaneous uh, torque transfer when you need it. And what's really great about that is typically with, with a pickup truck, you, you can't drive in four wheel drive four high or four low on dry pavement. It's, it's intended for inclement weather conditions, off road, sand, you know, snow, mud. But, but with this, you put it into four auto. I, we really think our customers are going to see that improved performance on road, but still have that great off road capability. And then we also have some new technology. We have we have Sync Four with an eight inch uh, touchscreen standard. We have an available uh, police engine idle feature where officers, if they're at the scene of a crime, they can 
they can hit the button, remove the key from ignition, but the, uh, the vehicle remains running to power the lights uh, with sirens, onboard equipment, things like that. So just just a lot of a lot of great new updates that we think our customers are going to really enjoy for 2021. I think the great thing about it is those. I guess, police customers that are in areas where it can suddenly get into off-road, you know, the outskirts of Denver or places like that where they have snowy weather and, uh, and they may suddenly find themselves in tundra where they can't actually uh, follow somebody or go into the off-road country. That This is perfectly useless, uh, useful so they can actually be driving the freeway and then suddenly they can find themselves in, you know, six inches of snow. They can still continue whatever they need to be doing and at the same yeah. time get out of the vehicle and, uh, and leave it running and keep it's safe and visible for anybody coming down the freeway at the same time. Uh, and the other thing is, too, you've made it sort of uh, so it's it's completely accessible. Now, obviously, uh, these things are, um, you know, vehicles are highly expensive to run for uh, in law enforcement uh, agencies. So presumably uh, they can negotiate good prices with you as well because these are our tax dollars, a you know, always. And uh, law enforcement are trying to keep their money down as well you came out with hybrid vehicles to keep patrol numbers down uh, expense numbers down and presumably this will keep expense numbers down as well for the community yeah yeah this is something we always try to try to offer value so so, so that's one thing with like i mentioned uh, the new tech you know standard tank we have we have a reverse sensing system now it's a basic you'll see feature now standard so of course offering the value but with with this with this customer with this truck it's it's really offering uh, that capability. A lot of a lot of our customers, um, F-150 police responder customers, I mean they're doing towing. I mean they have, they have payload, they have equipment in the, in the back. So, I mean we have the best in class um, out of any pursuit of vehicle uh, standard towing of seven thousand pounds and yeah. any even available of of eleven thousand two hundred pounds. So, a lot of agencies, you know, if they're if they're towing, you know, mobile command center. If you're a rural sheriff, you have a horse trailer, a yeah. boat, right? So you're covered there, but. But you'd be surprised. A, a, a lot of agencies look at this truck for, for the interior space. We have the most, um, out of any pursuit rated a vehicle, we have the most interior space. So a lot of agencies that, that are using it on daily patrol, on, on road most of the time, um, have, been, have been purchasing this truck. So it, it, it really satisfies a very wide array of customers. And we, we really think, like I mentioned earlier, that the on road performance is is going to really wow some customers, but it, but again, there's there's no trade offs. It's still going to perform off road as well. I think the other thing that wowed me, I mean, I, I did a TV piece on this vehicle as well. The other thing that sort of uh, made me excited about it is is the over the air updates. I mean, this doesn't mean that you have to take the vehicle out of service just to update the software. It means that it can happen while the vehicle's in service, and that means no service bay. So it takes it out of downtime. It can happen you know, as the vehicle remains in service. And and one thing that uh, municipalities hate to do is have their vehicles out of service because they have to have them updated just for insurance purposes. And so that yeah, helps them exactly as well. Right. I will tell yeah, you, though, exactly right. I did make an offer, Greg, to, uh, to you guys a year ago, and the offer still stands um, when you came out with your police vehicles. Anytime that you want to use me, uh, for TV purposes to test your ballistics, I will be happy to sit inside one of your vehicles and have the uh, <laughs> the marksman take a shot at. The, I think it would make great TV coverage. By the way, have Probably the marksman use, use that word. Uh, have the marksman take a shot at the vehicle. Although Dan Barbosa and your TV side did turn me down, but anytime you want to do that, <laughs> uh, we do it on live TV. We'll do it on all of our TV stations. I think it would be great, great coverage. Hey, nice. hey that sounds great. Hey, that sounds great. We would appreciate that. I don't know about the liability standpoint. There, exactly. But, hey, I appreciate. I appreciate you know you know the mindset and your willingness to really really help us. That's uh, that sounds great. Yeah, I think it got lost with the lawyers somewhere. I think that's what <laughs> yeah. that's yeah, what you're probably right. That's, that's what got right. lost. Well, so this is a good warning to everybody. Now, if you think you can outrun the cops on uh, on bad roads and uh, through campgrounds, if it's an F one fifty, you might seriously be in trouble. I mean, you should never try anyway, but uh, you might seriously yeah. be in trouble as well too. So, yeah, uh, exactly right. order books are open, right, Greg? Yeah, order banks opened um, here here March seventeenth. We're 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 going to be going into production for the all new twenty twenty one model year here, here in late summer, and then we're expecting some of the of the trucks start to arrive uh, with our agency customers probably probably in the late fall you know time frame. 
All right. And uh, I'm sure there's probably more good things uh, on the way as far as your police department and uh, police guys are concerned with uh, the new uh, vehicles that you uh, have coming out to in the future as well. Greg, it's always uh, good to hear from Ford and making sure that they're keeping all of our officers safe on the street. Uh, Greg is the uh, police brand marketing manager for uh, Ford and uh, telling us all about the new F-150, which they have put together. It is the police responder. And so next time you're... Uh, out and about and you see an F-150 behind you might not just be a regular F-150 even though it is the best selling truck in America and there is nearly 900,000 sold every year just might be a police responder version as well keeping the officers safe on the road oh our auto expert there's more on the way you've got some good stuff by the way we're going to find out about the new Jeep Grand Wagoneer next it's coming up you're listening to the Our Auto Expert podcast Locally created, nationally celebrated from the northwest to the southeast. This is the World's Car Radio Show. If it has a throttle, we'll feature it on air, online, on smartphone, and on smart speaker. This is our auto expert, where two million Americans get their automotive news daily. I'm your host, Nick Miles, along with truck girl, Jen. And thank goodness we got a truck on the car on the show today. Mm. You think I would skimp out on a truck? Yeah, well, you have done in the past, lady. Yeah, because didn't you tell me I had too many things? Too many GM no, things yeah, and too many was, truck you were things and too she- many... You were getting to Chevy a little bit heavy well, one week. Well, no, but I tried to put a lot of trucks on there, and you're kind of like, what about this? What about that? And I'm just trying to be fair to everybody. I know. I guess I have to be fair, and too. And let's just be honest. There's never enough British people on the show. Well, and this is one of... This is just such the cutest truck. I love this truck. Um, thank God there's more British people on the show. That's all I can say. <laughs> Welcome to uh, to our auto expert, Carl C. Pulley. How are you, my friend? Well, thank you much. And did Jen just call me Q, or did she call the truck tr- Q? Um, both, I both. guess. <laughs> yes. Listen, listen, take it. Just take it. She very rarely says cute, so just take it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Carl is uh, one of the public relations teams for Honda, and we are talking about their 2020, is it 2021 Ridgeline? 21, yeah. Yes. Uh, so the Ridgeline has been this interesting vehicle that is a truck with the accoutrements of an SUV. Am I correct? Um, well, yes, indeed. I mean, it's the only truck in the midside segment that uses a unibody construction. So basically the whole body is the frame. And there's huge advantages for a unibody construction, both in the SUVs that we produce, but also with a pickup truck because it's stronger has better torsional rigidity, um, is lighter, um, has better um, drive quality, it's safer, um, and just basically all around, it's really a better platform for the mid-sized pickup truck as, as, as far as Honda's concerned. I actually also enjoy the fact that it's comfortable and has a lot of accoutrements on the inside and very spacious and, you know, it's more sort of luxury car-like on the inside than very truck like it's true it's, it's not uncomfortable to climb into it has lots of space you know those type of things where a truck doesn't necessarily have all those things and then you still have the bed and a lot of cool stuff in the back of the bed like you're able to run a blender when make margaritas when you're camping <laughs> total win absolutely. for me <laughs> absolutely and you, and you hit the nail on the head i mean it has the largest most comfortable cabin in its class um by far um, it has that wonderful ride quality. Really, it's the only vehicle, only truck uh, in that midsize segment. You'd want to do any sort of, you know, long distance road trips on just because of how quiet it is, how comfortable, how roomy. Uh, I mean, it, it's so much larger in, in the back, um, in the second row than any of the competitors. So really, you can legitimately take five adults in comfort with all of their gear and all of their equipment. But as you said, it is very, very capable with truck-like stuff. In fact, it has the largest standard payload or the heaviest standard payload with almost 1,600 pounds compared to its competitors. Plus, it has the largest standard bed in its class. Um, and, and it's the only one where you can actually lay four-foot wide sheets of plywood or uh, drywall flat in the bed. So, you know, when it comes to truck capabilities, it's got that down to... Oh, did we lose Carl? I think we lost Carl for a second there. Oh, 
Yep, I'm, no, no. I'm, I'm still here. Can you oh, hear yeah. me? Oh, no, yeah. You dropped out for a second, but you're back. You're back. So we got, uh, you can actually lay drywall was where we lost you. Carry on. Yeah, so it's, yeah, it's the only vehicle in class where you can do that. And with its uh, standard um, IVTM four-wheel drive system. So that basically is an, um, it's an intelligent all-wheel drive system that can send up to 70% of the available engine torque to the rear wheels. And then apportion that torque up to 100% to either wheel. So it allows you to do torque vectoring, which means you overpower the outside rear wheel to enable the, um, the vehicle to pivot through turns. So when it comes to handling, uh, I mean, it, it's uh, superb in its class. If you're uh, driving that twisty mountain road up to your favorite camping spot, it's going to be far more agile, far easier to drive. And I mentioned the power. Um, it's powered by a standard V6, um, uh, uh, V6 uh, 3.5 liter engine with 280 horsepower and 262 pounds of torque. Um, and together with that all-wheel drive system, we have what we call variable traction management. So it actually has selectable modes depending upon uh, the environment in which you're driving. So it has standard, but also it has snow, it has sand, and it has mud. And it changes how the, the power is apportioned and changes the traction control system. So, for instance, if you're in deep sand, um, normal traction control systems would stop sending power to the wheels because they're slipping. But in sand, you need the opposite. You need those wheels to keep churning, to keep plowing through that sand. So it's a very, very smart system. Um, so it's incredibly capable off-road as well. So you really have, you know, everything. I mean, it's a win-win-win. You have the capabilities, the comfort of an SUV. You have those truck capabilities with the bed and the payload. Plus, you have the off-road ability with the all-wheel drive system and the variable traction uh, management system as well. And we haven't really mentioned things like uh, the bedliner, which you, when you first came out with the truck, you did some horrible things to by pouring rocks in the back to show how durable it was. <laughs> well, yeah, as you probably remember, um, uh, Ford and Chevy were having this kind of uh, grudge match with regards to whether a steel or aluminium uh, bed, and yes, I did say aluminium, uh, <laughs> is better. Whereas um, the, the Honda, the Ridgeline, uses a glass reinforced composite that is actually dent, scratch, and gouge resistant. So, you know, we kind of did a very cheap uh, PR video where we dumped a bunch of rocks in the back, threw a metal tool chest in the back, full of tools, by the way, um, just to show you that how strong and capable that, that bed is. Um, and, and one unique thing, you had mentioned that uh, you could run a blender out the back because uh, some of the top trims get a power outlet, but also the top trim gets what we call exciters. Uh, there's five exciters within the bed that basically creates a, a, a speaker out of the bed. So the entire bed turns into a speaker. Uh, and also under the bed, you have an over seven cubic foot um, in bed trunk that's waterproof so i mean it's the ultimate tailgate vehicle the the tailgate swings down but also it swings out so you can get close up to the bed you can open that in bed trunk fill it with ice keep your uh, favorite refreshments cool you can um run a blender and also you can have your tunes coming out of the entire bed so um, I mean, no other vehicle has those sort of uh, features. Wait a minute. So you're saying that I could probably put, like, some kind of plastic inside and make myself a swimming pool in the bed? Um, People yeah, have done yeah, it. Could, but actually, yeah. Uh, but in the, in, the, in the bed, underneath the bed, is a seven-cubic-foot trunk. So, um, yeah, I mean, you could probably fold yourself up and put it inside. And also it has a drain plug, so you can there drain you the water out. But absolutely, it's entirely watertight, just like a, a cooler. Maybe we should do this. I'm just thinking at margaritas what we should... in a swimming no, pool. No, yeah, we should have um, we should have a summer party uh -huh. when my studio is finished. We're building a studio on the property, um, and when the studio is finished, I'm just thinking maybe what we should do is just have when we have the open house, we should get a ridge line there and put a put a pool in the back of it, uh -huh. and where we have margaritas, it would just it would be awesome. We might have to put mats around the outside so drunk people don't fall out of it. But, you know. <laughs> well, it just so happens you have a, have a man in the know that could uh, uh, get you one of those fine ridge lines. And, 
One of the things I wanted to mention, obviously we're talking about the 21, there were some big changes to styling for the 21. So everything from the A pillar forward is all new with styling. And so um, previously the, the styling was very aerodynamic, which helped with fuel economy. But still, it's one of the better at 21 miles per gallon combined fuel economy. But it didn't look as rugged as its capabilities. So one of the big things that designers did was entirely change the front end the, the hood is more horizontal. The front is more flat and more rugged looking. Um, the, the flanks a little bit more aggressive. So um, now when you look at the vehicle, as you approach it, like, yeah, this truck can do truck things, and indeed it can. I'm, I will tell you that I am an absolute fan of this vehicle just because it gives you both worlds. It gives you this sort of cabin of, a, and of an SUV and the capabilities of a truck and a secret trunk, and a dual opening tailgate, and power for a margarita mixer, or a blender, or whatever you should choose in the back, or a chop saw if you so be the workman type, uh, or woman Ash. type. Um, and it holds two motorcycles. Yes. Off-road um, motorcycles. And you even sell the, um, or you can get the uh, the little things to to push your motorcycle up, or ride it up into mm -hmm. the trunk as well. The, um, what yep, the, the ramps. 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 Yeah. Yes, you, everyone yeah. thinks of everything. And, oh, by the way, a Honda 4x4 even fits in the back, right? Yeah, so, um, yeah, and obviously we, you know, we as a company, we produce our dirt bikes, ATVs, and side-by-sides. -side. So um, this is the wonderful com companion for those people that have that motorized um, off-road lifestyle in that you have this capable truck that can take you deep into the wilderness on those rough and ready trails take your dirt bike, your ATV, your side-by-side, -side, and then really go aggressive because, you know, our Talon series of sports side-by-sides are basically off-road race cars uh, with huge amounts of suspension travel. So, you know, even uh, though the, the ridgeline can take you deep into that wilderness, then you get in one of those towers. Yeah. Uh, with the 5,000-pound tow capacity, you can yeah. easily tow a trailer with, in fact, two Talons, um, and then all of your, your friends, yeah. and uh, yeah, then you can have a tailgate party at the end of the day when whoop. you stop driving and riding. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Everything sounds like <laughs> fun. Uh, Carl Pauly from uh, Honda, uh, you wet my whistle, and uh, my whistle will be wet afterwards in the, uh, in the party. Uh, it sounds like a lot of fun. The new Ridgeline, the 2021. Find out more uh, from Honda's website. More to come. You're listening to Our Auto Expert. Catch up with previous episodes of the show at our website, ourautoexpert.com. You can hear past shows, see automotive videos, and read inside a car story about your next ride. Our Auto Expert is where 2 million Americans get their automotive news daily. Okay, well, you uh, hopefully saw the big news that Jeep had to offer in the last few weeks. Yep. They launched two brand new vehicles, and they also launched the fact that uh, Jeep will have a new premium brand, uh, American premium brand, and that will be called Wagoneer. Um, and to tell us all about what that actually means and uh, to talk about what that Wagoneer brand is all about, uh, Rachel Felrath is joining us on the phone. She's a senior manager for the Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer. So, Rachel, welcome to the show. Uh, a lot on your plate. I'm sure it's the biggest news that Jeep have dropped in some time. Uh, you've got a lot of news coming this year. It's probably one of the biggest uh, PR departments in the country, and I'm sure everybody wants to hear from you right now. So the Wagoneer and the Grand Wagoneer are part of a much bigger plan for Jeep, and that is this sort of new venture for them. So explain to us, first of all, Rachel, what's the new venture, and, and how does it sort of position itself? Because if you go to Stellantis's website, which is your parent company, uh, Wagoneer has its own title, it does. Well, first, I wanted to say thank you for having me. Um, but yeah, a little bit about, you know, Wagoneer and, and what this means for us. So, you know, Wagoneer is it's more than just, uh, I would say, marking the rebirth of, of a, you know, an American premium. What we're really aiming to do with the Wagoneer uh, sub brand or, you know, to the premium extension of the Jeep brand. So it's undeniably, unquestionably rooted in Jeep heritage, but we're seeking to go beyond that into more premium segments. So when you look at Jeep, 
Um, it covers the breadth of, of the mainstream UV market from, from compact, smaller UVs up through the full-size UV segment. And where we really saw that we had an opportunity was uh, in the large UV segment and also in the premium segments. And this Wagoneer extension will allow us to, to reach new customers and reach into new territories that we haven't been uh, uh, present in before. So really this is sort of, um, I'm, is it sort of against Lincoln? Is it sort of against Cadillac? It's sort of this new premium vehicle that uh, everybody can have capability, utility, and premium features with uh, at, at the same time as be American-made, uh, adventure-born. Am I sort of hitting all of the right notes on the piano you, there? You are very, you're hitting the right notes. Your, your piano is very well-tuned. Excellent. Um, you know, we're... <laughs> now, the other thing I, it's, it's sort of trying to understand, too, is the Wagoneer and the Grand Wagoneer. I mean, they look very similar. There's some slight engine changes. Uh, they're different engines. They are uh, slightly differently equipped, but they're not vastly different. Uh, no, they're, they are siblings, um, but the, the Wagoneer itself is, is targeted to to compete in the heart of the large UV segment. So really aimed at those, you know, growing American families, those couples who have it all, who, you know, seek to, to go on adventures and, and pack everyone and everything um, that they can into the vehicle. It, you know, it tows you know, best in class up to 10,000 pounds so they can take their toys with them. So really it's focused on supporting the lifestyles of, of those with, you know, growing and changing families. Now, the Grand Wagoneer, um, it does have some differences. Uh, you noted that it does look a little bit different. So when you look at the Grand Wagoneer, you will see that it has its own unique hood, its own unique front fascia and grille. Uh, it has unique uh, wheel flares, uh, as well as a accented two-tone uh, black roof. So uh, you'll, you'll find some exterior differences. You'll also find some interior differences. So the Grand Wagoneer is basically everything that the Wagoneer is, but at a more upscale, more premium level. So you get the larger screens, you get more screens, uh, you get, you know, uh, more ways of your seats. So we, we've taken the Grand, we've taken the Wagoneer and upscaled it uh, in the Grand Wagoneer. And that's really for those kind of more discerning customers who are in the premium segment. The screen space in the Grand Wagoneer, and excuse my language, is ridiculously large. <laughs> That's, yes, yes, accurate. Uh, so we have up to 75 inches of front screen, or 75 inches of screen total with uh, up to 45 inches of screen in the front. So you have a 12.3-inch uh, digital cluster, a 12-inch touchscreen radio, uh, optionally, uh, you can get the 10.25 inch uh, front passenger display, wow. and then in the rear, uh, the dual 10 inch uh, rear, you know, seat entertainment, as well as a, a 10.25 inch comfort display where you can control uh, the rear climate control, the rear seats, vented, uh, heating, those sorts of things. And the sound system, of course, the first time I've ever seen Macintosh in a car. But it looks, just from the pictures, haven't got to see it or hear it, looks phenomenal. Yes. So uh, we're partnering with Macintosh. We have two different Macintosh systems available uh, on, between the Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer. So we have the 19-speaker system, and then we have the uh, MX-1375 reference entertainment system. So that's our our you know, epitome of a premium 23 speaker system. Uh, you know, that just, it's an incredible, incredible sound system. How, uh, um, there's two questions. First of all, a lot of people are not going to really know Wagoneer that well. It sort of uh, vacated in the 80s. Uh, Mid 80s was the last time Wagoneer was around. So you've got a big, a big problem on your hands. Not a problem, but a big load on your hands to get across the Wagoneer messaging. Yes, it's a lot of American heritage, but you've got to tell everybody what this new Wagoneer is about. I mean, obviously, we're part of that message, but you've got to tell everybody what it stands for, what it is. How it's, I mean, there's a lot of messaging here, right? There, there is. Um, you know, and I think you'd actually be surprised when, when you bring up uh, Wagoneer, you know, people, a lot of people uh, that I've come across, you know, they have fond memories of their neighbor had okay. one or 
you know, their family was lucky enough to have one. So I, I actually have come across, you know, those individuals um, more than more than I would have expected. And right. I was just driving one um, the, the other week and, you know, one of our one of our early build vehicles and someone said, oh, that's that's a Jeep. And right. I said, you know, and I, right. I explained kind of what we're doing with Wagoneers. So I think, yes, th- there'll be some challenges to, to build the awareness, but I think there's a more established uh, basis foundation there than, than you might expect. Good job. Uh, I look for the wood paneling. That'll be next. More to come. You're listening to the Our Auto Expert Podcast. This is our Auto Expert Radio Show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can start a conversation with us, ask a car question. Just direct message us at Our Auto Expert, where 2 million Americans get their automotive news daily. He joins us every single week, Anton Wallman. He's an independent investor and analyst. He also writes for The Street and Seeking Alpha. Please go and read his stuff there because he is probably the premium and the most well-read and respected person when it comes to investing in the automotive industry, analyzing uh, Uh, all of the uh, independent uh, or all of the car companies when it comes to respect of electric cars, car companies, and the car companies who are involved in autonomous driving. Uh, Anton joining us this week. Let's talk about the new U.S. Transport Secretary who says uh, they wanted to uh, start talking about uh, taxing car drivers on the federal level uh, by the mile. Now, of course, if you live in Oregon, uh, and uh, other states like that, uh, car, s- the state itself has wanted to tax people uh, for a long time, uh, talking about uh, taxing them on the individual level as far as states are concerned. But uh, when we come to uh, the federal level, this is the first time it's happened. So the, the newest, new U.S. Transport Secretary says he wants to start taxing car drivers on a federal level. Anton is this just, uh, let's say, posturing, or is it likely to happen? Anton, do we have you? Oh, we'll try again. I think we might have lost him. Uh, yeah, we can talk about that. It actually appeared on Twitter. Uh, we may have lost Anton for a second there. Uh, this is uh, Pete Buttigieg, uh, who's the transport secretary. He says uh, taxing drivers by the mile shows a lot of promise and could be the way to fund big infrastructure and a big infrastructure overhaul. Now, does it mean a big difference for each individual driver? Of course, those drivers that drive a lot, that might be a, a very different way to go. Uh, Pete Buttigieg did a really good job of uh, South Bend, Indiana infrastructure and restructuring that town uh, as far as the transportation division was. Uh, that town, uh, he, when he was even a high school student, had great plans for it and managed to change the infrastructure of the town. But when we look at the federal infrastructure, it might be very different from one town in Indiana versus the federal structure and uh, nobody likes to pay more taxes i mean do we drive more and do we pay more that's uh, the big question so hopefully we have anton back again uh, anton if you're there uh, do we think that this is just posturing by pete Buttigieg, or is this actually going to happen taxing everybody per mile well so usually a an exact government policy tends to be preceded by by what is in technical terms called an uh, a trial balloon, and we may put this in the category of a trial balloon. Certainly, they're floating the idea now, and whether it will eventually come to fruition or not obviously isn't a given yet, but uh, there seems to be a willingness to very seriously consider this. Uh, is it going to be more expensive for us, or is it going to be less expensive for us? Well, if it happens, and mind you, that's an if. Uh, not when, uh, it will almost certainly be more expensive for the driver. They're not doing this in order to reduce the government's revenue. They're only doing it to increase the revenue from the government and uh, probably to get some more revenue from uh, those who live in more rural areas to, uh, that they think uh, pay too little money. And ultimately, you know, those people who are moving outside of the cities to get cheaper housing, then it's a sort of a backlash against them. Yeah, look, there are a lot of things going on here, but ultimately, you know, most of these road taxes are really collected on the state level these days, and the federal government has a federal gas tax that's 18.4 cents per gallon, 
for gasoline and 24.4 cents per gallon for diesel that have been in effect since 1993 for 28 years now, and they clearly want more. So instead of raising the gas tax on a federal level, this may be something that they're considering to try to get more money and certainly more money from certain people. Is that falling because we're using less gas with the adoption of electric, or is it really not changing? That hasn't really changed yet. That may be a motivation uh, to drive this in the future, but that is not something that has really impacted this per se. What has impacted it uh, to some extent is the fact that, of course, uh, gasoline prices in recent years have really fallen uh, in relationship to an inflation-adjusted number compared to where they were, these prices, just a couple of decades ago. All right, let's turn to Elon Musk. He says after a semi-truck unveiling in November, uh, which didn't happen, uh, you know, in November 2017, which didn't uh, didn't actually come to fruition, didn't make it to market in 2019 as promised, it didn't uh, make it in 2020, or even uh, what happened in uh, 2021 as most recently promised, but uh, rather is probably like to make it in 2022. Uh, These are more broken promises from Elon Musk about the semi-truck, the electric semi-truck. Is it really going to make it to market ever? Well, they're clearly working on something. We've seen recently more prototypes being out there, and there was some announcement that they hope to deliver 15 or 18 of them by year end to Pepsi, but I would still put that into a uh, commercial trial fleet rather than these being volume deliveries. There's no question that they will probably deliver a few dozen or maybe even a hundred to various customers like the anheuser Bushes of this world uh, that will obviously then need to test it out. The way it goes with these commercial fleets is that it's one thing for the automaker or the truck maker in this case to test something internally and then hand it over to a large organization, be it a FedEx or UPS or any of these large companies, but they themselves really want to test it out under their own regime for a long time before they press the button for mass deployment. The semi-truck is is just all electric, but we're not talking about autonomy, or are we talking about autonomy? Well, uh, from the launch event in November 2017, what was conspicuously absent from that uh, event, which I have uh, in very close memory, uh, they did actually not talk about anything autonomous at the time. Of course, Tesla, both before then and after that time, have uh, ceased no moment in time to really talk about autonomy at almost every opportunity. But that was an event where they conspicuously just avoided the subject. So I'm not sure what their ambition is really there. Maybe this is something that is considered a bit too difficult or something like that, or maybe something that it's uh, one of those uh, driver assistance features that for long-haul uh, drivers that sit on these uh, long stretches that is more uh, akin to the kind of cruise control systems that are already in the market today. Now, we know that uh, with technology, definitely back in 2017, these trucks weren't able to have the battery sizes that they needed to do uh, much uh, once they had the battery sizes, they weren't able to haul much of a load. Of course, things have been changing year after year. Do we think the technology exists now that they could uh, haul a load and have a battery size to get a decent distance? Uh, or is there something that we haven't been told? Uh, I don't think the technology is there yet. Keep in mind that the biggest problem here is simply weight. Weight, weight, and weight. These batteries, uh, even though you, if you assume further improvements every year by some percentage, it's going to be quite a while before they can compensate for their enormous weight. Uh, mind you, these trucks need to be able to carry about 80,000 pounds worth of payload, and the tractor, the thing that the actual truck that pulls them, it just can't uh, weigh more than X number of pounds because then it fails to meet all of the requirements. So, And, of course, it's fine if you're going uh, downhill with the wind in your back, but let's say you're going to take this thing on the long distance and suddenly you're going to traverse the Rocky Mountains in bad weather and uh, the wind against you, well, then, uh, Houston, we have a problem. All right. The uh, Tesla's not – this is not their only – product that they've been promising to deliver. We're also uh, still waiting for the Roadster 2.0. They took uh, $250,000 up front for the 2.0 and November 2017 that that was also uh, on the books and still waiting for something to happen. 
That's right. Same event as a semi truck, Nick, in November 2017. That took 250,000 from some people up front to be part of that first group of uh, really uh, uh, sort of uh, anointed early buyers. Uh, and uh, they promised the car to be delivered by 2020. And, of course, it probably won't make it by the end of 2021, or God knows after that. So uh, that is uh, that is kind of a broken promise. All right. Then quickly, while we've got a minute left or so, chip shortage, it's causing more factory delays, places being shut down. It's starting to be a nightmare. We predicted this months ago. Oh, God, this is getting going from worse to nightmare to even worse. We have all of these chip shortages, but now we have the Suez Canal blocked. And overall, an enormous increase in cost across almost all the raw materials, from copper to silver to almost all the components that go into this thing. The price of an automobile, I'm telling you, Nick, and I've been telling it for just over a year already, are going to increase. The prices are going to come up. Uh, the cost of production, all the materials, all the labor, and now we have these enormous in- interruptions that are happening in front of our eyes. If you're planning on buying a car in the next few months, better run out and get it now because there won't be any discounts if you can find a car at all. And uh, the basic prices, you're going to see automakers just racing all these MSRPs pretty soon. All right. Well, uh, well unfortunately, uh, the warning signs are all there. Hopefully, uh, they can try and get things together. But it sounds like car prices are going to go up and go up steeply. So uh, the signals are there for everybody. Hopefully, some of those things will get reversed and there'll be some emergency measures to try and uh, at least get production moving. But factories are being shut down uh, left, right and center. Uh, Anton Wallman, independent analyst and investor. You can read the majority of his stuff at the street and Seeking Alpha. As always, you can hear all of his uh, news and reviews at OurAutoExpert.com. And there's probably nobody in the industry that is as well-versed in autonomous cars, electric cars, especially when it comes to uh, Tesla and the European sales market. Please read his stuff again at the street and Seeking Alpha. And uh, he has the inside scoop of the story. And, of course, as we always tell you each week, you can go to OurAutoExpert.com and click on the podcast and listen to the podcast. There is 140 episodes of the podcast there. Uh, We enjoy it when you do that because we see you do it. And uh, you can be registered as one of our podcast receivers and get to know when you do that as well. All right. We'll be back more on the show. Stand by. You're listening to Our Auto Expert. Over 12,000 people have downloaded Our Auto Expert podcast and many more have streamed us. Join the having listeners by iHeartRadio, Pandora app, and Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and OurAutoExpert.com. Hours of endless fun. I'm Nick Miles, and this is Our Auto Expert radio show, where 2 million Americans get their automotive news daily. Well, if you ever wanted to do a cross-country trip with a little bit of a twist... This guy is definitely doing it. Uh, I'm not sure I would take such an exciting risk, but uh, Dustin Krauss has been driving an ID4 from VW across the country. He is the director of e-mobility, and uh, he's joining us on the phone. So first of all, um, have you got any scary stories to tell us? Uh, not at all. The car what? <laughs> lawlessly. Um you know, maybe some some nights getting in late, but other than that, we haven't worried about charging. The car has just done great. Um, it really hasn't even been a thought, and we've taken some detours, um, and we're taking one today through Joshua Tree. So, you know, we're taking the car to the maximum, but I'm telling you, it's treating us well. You have learned, and I'm going to guess this, because everybody that takes a tour across the country, you've probably learned how big America is, haven't you? Yeah, absolutely. And we did it the long way. <laughs> we started in New York went down through D.C., back up through Chicago, through the Midwest, down to the, the uh, to Florida, then across. Uh, awesome. So we've already driven more than 6,000 miles, and uh, we're only uh, just crossing into California, and we're going all the way up to Sacramento. I, uh, I drove, I think, one time from... Uh, Chicago to uh, Milwaukee and then to Detroit. And that wasn't very far. And I was like, Whoa, that's a long way. That was <laughs> that, oh, Indianapolis to Detroit. Yeah, that was long enough for me. Washington State. Yeah, we've got a few more hours under our belt here with this one. Yeah, it's it's long. So um, presumably the app, uh, the, 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 uh, the Electrify America app has been probably your best friend. 
yeah, it's so easy. It's it's uh, literally plug in, swipe the app and charge. It also tells you where all your next charging stations are. Uh, and, you know, they're, they're, they're far enough apart where you can get a good distance, but you don't have to be really worried about range. We've actually visited some of the most remote Electrify America stations in the U.S. Uh, we were in Junction, Texas, just a few days ago, which is literally in the middle of nowhere. And we went from Junction all the way to Marfa, Texas, which is a cool art town kind of in the southern part of Texas, very remote. So this trip's not just about making a speed run across the country. We could have done that. But we actually have a film crew with us uh, doing a documentary, and this is about an adventure and how you can have an adventure and a great trip in an EV uh, and do it in a way that, um, you know, is super fun. And when you're using Electrify America with the ID4, um, all of your DC fast charging stops through Electrify America are free. So we're driving this car zero emissions at zero cost across the USA. Um, have you uh, have you eaten a lot more fast food and drunk a lot more <laughs> coffee than you were expecting? <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry to say, you know, you know, it's two of us doing this road trip. We switch off driving. Uh, the car hasn't been fumigated too bad, but we have hit, we have hit the deep dish pizza in Chicago, the barbecue in Texas. Uh, you know, we've we've done some of that stuff, but it it hasn't been too bad. It would have been fun to take we, you. It would have been. Of course, said we were going to be good. Yeah, we're going to be good on this trip. We're going to eat healthy. And it never happened. It would have been really good to do your blood lipids before you left, and then when you got <laughs> when you get when you get to the other end and see how how much blood fat you had, because I know what it's like. I always say on these road trips, oh, I'm going to get groceries and eat like fruit and stuff on the way, and by 20 minutes into it, I got cookies and like string cheese. <laughs> That's what ends yeah. up happening. Yeah, I mean it's all it's all fun. Yeah. I, I like the fact that the the Electrify America always puts their charging stations near Starbucks because that then I'm always like, oh, 20 minutes and I'll have a coffee. That's mm. good for me. They're con- they're conveniently located to coffee and candy, uh, <laughs> and uh, we've we've been uh, doing both of those. Uh, driving across America, your blood pressure is up 20 points and you're a diabetic. But it's been great driving <laughs> across the country. <laughs> I, I know. Did you learn anything you didn't expect to learn, Dustin? Well, I think, you know, being a, I, there's a couple things. You know, um, I, I feel fortunate. I've been able to be vaccinated for COVID um, and just now seeing the, co- the country and, and, you know, how different parts of the country are dealing with um, the pandemic is very interesting. Um, you know, and some of the places that we've gone and what's closed, what's open and, and dealing with that. But in terms of the car, I think it's the, the thing that I've learned is how easy it is now to drive an EV across the country. I've been working with EVs uh, for, for about 14, 15 years now. And I did a cross country trip in 2010 in an EV uh, and I had to use KOA campgrounds and it took me four hours for every char- charging stop I need to make. Right. And now you can just do it so easily. And what it really shows me is that we truly are at a tipping point, um, and it's just a fantastic place to be. It's it's it is very easy, and I think once you do have an app, it it almost th- there's very few places in the country that are not open to you. Um, you can usually find uh, every almost you can go almost everywhere unless it's super remote and it's almost hard to get there. I mean, you'd have to have gas cans on your car if you wanted to go there anyway. Uh, with a gas vehicle just to fill up and get back. So there's very few places in the country that are not open to you. Um, if you have an electric vehicle, uh, it's very easy to get around at that point. Um, do you get Are you getting a lot of audience interaction? And when I mean audience, I mean Americans seeing you on the road going, ooh, what's that? Oh, yeah. We're, we're, we're having people, you know, basically, uh, you know, pull up to the side of us, you know, really cheer us on because we have a, a little bit of, uh, you know, we have some vinyl wrap on the car. It's very, you know, subtle. But, um, you know, it, it sticks out a little bit more than maybe another car on the road. Actually, today we had another car join us. We actually had two ID4s on the road uh, going to Joshua Tree. So that's getting a lot of attention. And it seems like everywhere we park, we gather a crowd. Uh, we were just in uh, Dallas, Texas a few days ago, uh, and we parked in front of a restaurant. We had people coming out of the restaurant to see the car. So there's a ton of interest. And, you know, I think everybody has a VW story. Uh, you know, at one point in their life, they remember, you know, driving a VW or having one before. They have one now. And I just think there's a lot of excitement about VW getting into this um, into this technology. And what we've done with the ID4 has got a lot of people excited. All right, Dustin, how can people follow the rest of your journey? Well, you can, you can follow us uh, on VW, um, all of our different social uh, platforms that we have, um, and uh, follow us there. We're going to be posting a lot more, actually, after we end the journey. 
Uh, and then we have a press YouTube page where we're doing a, a daily YouTube blog of our, our journey. So uh, it's real quick and just kind of what we've uh, covered during the day. All right. It sounds a lot of fun. Dustin Krauss is the director of eMobility. You can follow that uh, EV story. And congratulations, by the way. And uh, now you'll probably be eating salads for the next month when you get home. Dustin, thanks for joining <laughs> us. Uh, and congratulations on making your cross-country trip. I'm sure it's something you'll be telling uh, the family and the grandchildren for years to come. Our Auto Expert That's is right. online. You can listen to this show and the rest of the shows by going to our O-U-R, Auto, A-U-T-O, Expert, E-X-P, ERT.com. See our videos and all the TV stories that we had. By the way, if you want to see that F-150 uh, police vehicle, we have the online video of how that works. That is at the uh, website as well as this show and all the shows in the future. Uh, you can check them out. And of course, you can also read the Insider Car stories that we write every week and you can keep in touch with the new vehicles that are coming out. Uh, our Wagoneer story uh, made a lot of headlines when we broke that one as well. See what that looks like and see the videos and find out about the new Jeep Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer. We'll be back again next week with another slapping great show. And you'll be here too, Jen, right? Of course. You've been listening to Our Auto Expert with Nick Miles. Find all the show episodes at ourautoexpert.com. Please follow us on all social media, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Our Auto Expert. And message us for a quick and witty response.